What is going on trainers? Drum Villain here and we made it. We hit legend rank. I put a poll up on the channel asking you guys what you wanted me to focus on first and you guys said you wanted to see a team to counter wall rain for the Ultra League. So I decided to give it a try out and it was amazing. I went 21 and 4 in my first five sets of Ultra League with this team. Shot up 250 ELO straight to legend rank. The crazy thing is, is we didn't actually see all that many war rain. We saw a few, when we did see them, we won though. And that's all you need to ask from a war rain counter team, right? If you see a war rain, you want to kick its ass. And that's exactly what this team's going to do for you. I am probably going to show you guys all 25 battles um, in this video. So it probably will be quite a long one. And I'll probably talk about the last two sets of some of the more hardcore sweaty matches when I was up at the 2900 ELO range battling legend ranks. I believe every trainer in the last set was already legend drunk that I battled, which again, absolutely crazy. Fantastic performance from this team. So I know you guys are gonna be eager to see the team. So I'm gonna say this now, please like the video if you do enjoy it, it helps the performance out massively. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. You wanna see more teams, more strategies that I'll be bringing you for the Ultra and Ultra Classic moving forward. Hit that button, you wanna be notified, right? You wanna see those videos first. All right, let's take a look at the squad. On the lead, we will have Talonflame, and this is the only XL Pokemon on the team, and I know that's going to be off-putting to some people, but we are in the Open Ultra League. XL Pokemon are allowed, Legendary Pokemon are allowed. If you want to compete against something as meta as Warring, you're going to need at least one XL Pokemon, probably somewhere, and Talonflame is probably one of the most accessible since it did have a community day, so it's quite a good opportunity to get those candies. It's nice and easy to walk to get XLs if you don't have them. This Talonflame does have the legacy move Incinerate from the community day and mine is a level 51, 13, 15, 15 best buddy Talonflame. So the best IVs it can be for the Ultra League, but a hundo maxed out works just fine. On the say swap position, we have Shadow Snorlax. Now you could use a regular Snorlax and we are going to run Lick, Superpower and Body Slam. We're going to be able to threaten those Steel types with Superpower, threaten the Ice types like War Rain. And Snorlax, again, like Talonflame, does beat Warrain in a one-to-one -one matchup. In the back, we've got Cresselia running the legacy move Grass Knot. You do need Grass Knot on Cresselia because it's your hard counter to water types that might swap into your Talonflame like Politoed and Swampert. It also means that it can two-shot a Shadow Warrain straight out. Or against a regular Warrain, you can land two Grass Knots and maybe have an aggressive farm down or just land three. Either way, you can take those Icicle Spears all day on Cresselia because it is very, very bulky. All right, so that's the squad. I'm now going to talk to you guys about how to play this team. I'm going to start with the fifth set of battles, so the one that actually got me to Legend Rank. These are going to be the sweatiest matches against incredible trainers, great matches, and there's a lot to learn from them on both parts. All right, first battle, Jellicent lead. Now, this is kind of a terrible lead for this team, actually. One of the worst leads that this team can see. It's a Hex Jellicent, but we are going to say swap Cresselia rather than Snorlax because Snorlax is a much harder wall to this thing. So we want to tempt them to swap out and see what they're going to do. Since they built up five, we felt like they probably weren't going to bait us with a Bubble Beam and felt it was worth a shield because once you shield a Shadow Ball, you're in actually an advantageous position in this matchup because you get to Grass Knots faster than they get to Shadow Balls and um, a Shadow Ball won't take you out. You can survive one, they have to get two off. So we're now kind of looking positive in the situation. We're also happy that they're staying in and they're actually going to play this matchup out so we can keep Talonflame away from this thing. We're probably going to get that shield back that we invested at the start here. We do. That's absolutely fantastic. So now we're going to let Cresselia go down and we're actually going to farm down with Talonflame because our switch clock is back up. This matchup dragged on quite long and they can't get to um, a Shadow Ball to do big damage to us here. We're going to get an energy advantage and even if something bad comes in, we can throw a Brave Bird straight away and then swap to Snorlax and clear that debuff. So Nidoqueen comes in, pretty neutral matchup, can really add up over time with that Poison Fang and Poison Jab damage. We see MP tie, which is unfortunate because we're going to have to shield the Poison Fang since we were majorly debuffed. So we're all shields down now, swapping to Snorlax, and they've got a Scrafty in the back. So you might be thinking, well, you've lost this game, right? Surely because your shield's down, the Nidoqueen Queen's going to be able to run rampant, this Scrafty's going to be able to run rampant, but you are underestimating Shadow Snorlax. We're going to throw a Body Slam first because they're not likely to shield the first move, put them into a full sense of security, 
This is just another body slam, Scrafty. Don't you worry about it. It won't quite take you out. You'll survive. Bang! No, you won't. Absolutely annihilated. And now this Nidder Queen is super low. We don't even need to get another charge move through. We can just farm down with Incinerate. And it's kind of lucky because if the opponent would have shielded the superpower, they could have just farmed down completely and thrown a foul play at Talonflame and taken us out. But here we're going to just survive one HP and a dream. Take that Nidder Queen out and take the win against a horrendous line. Jellicent lead, Scrafty in the back, like just counters to our team all the way through and we've managed to pull it off. All right, second matchup. What's Leo Rick 513 bringing to the table? It's a Cresselia lead. Now, generally, this is going to look like a good lead for Talonflame. There are quite a lot of Cresselia on the leads that I saw running Future Sight instead of um, Grass Knot, which actually is really bad for Talonflame. Um, Cresselia can easily win that matchup if it has Future Sight. Now, they say swap into an Umbreon, and we're very, very happy to see this here because Umbreon does quite well against both Snorlax and Cresselia because Umbreon's resisting that lick damage um, and it's doing super effective with its dark moves against Cresselia. So we're going to stay in here. We're not shielding up yet because you don't have to shield until the last foul play that would take you out because there's no way they can farm you down with Snarl unless you debuff yourself with a Brave Bird. Once we got a shield, we decided to swap into Shadow Snorlax since the Umbreon was low enough to take out with one Body Slam or maybe a buttload of licks, but that might be a little bit aggressive the opponent swaps into a swampert here and again i disagree with this completely you saw how much damage that one body slam did to this shadow swampert we're gonna be able to survive one we can shield up this next one because we will make it to another body slam just before they make it to their third hydro cannon to get our last shield out of us so we can take this match up and now we've got switch advantage the umbreon's pretty low it's low enough that cresselia doesn't have to worry about it too much but they're going to bring in their own cresselia here and we're very, very happy to see this because we can body slam, we can lick, we can get some nice chip damage in, which means that our Cresselia can very easily take their Cresselia. So we're not going to show this up and let Snorlax go down. Their Umbreon is loaded. It swapped out with energy, so we need the shield to make sure that we can protect this Cresselia. They swap into Umbreon trying to fire off the foul play quickly and we swap into Talonflame and catch. That's completely fine. Now I bring Cresselia back in. They've got another charge move ready to go so we can shield this up it's the hardest damaging charge move left in the game so it's completely worth it and now we can get to a moon blast before umbreon gets to one last foul play take them out and now we've got a monumental health advantage against this opposing cresselia it doesn't matter it, this cresselia would need to have had about 100 energy to be able to flip this situation back or they need the attack debuff but they really needed it then before we could start getting charge moves off and now at this point we can just go for double grass knot it will be enough to finish off this Cresselia we might have just been able to go for three grass knots before but either way it doesn't matter that much you're going to see this is still going to be fairly close because they did have an energy advantage but it's Cresselia is too bulky you can't really aggressively dominate each other no matter what moveset you've got on Cresselia the time is coming up this match has dragged on quite long this health is pretty close but we see MP tie the last grass nut off and knock them out as the timer runs out bit of lag there but gg umbreon can put a fair amount of work in if it gets past talon flame but it's not the end of the world snorlax and cresselia can handle it but it might just put you on a bit of a back foot all right matchup number three was a talon flame mirror match and this is a scary matchup because brave bird does massive damage flame charge is a very very good bait move in this situation but i found a lot of trainers at this rank with Talonflame leads just go straight Brave Bird so we shield up that's fantastic we go for our own Brave Bird we'll probably get a shield back with this we do and no one snuck any incinerates we actually sneak one through there that's fantastic now we're ahead on energy they go for a second Brave Bird so we're down both shields they bring in War Rain we're going to go for a flame charge here are they going to shield this up they are now we could have tried to go for the Brave Bird but we were double defense debuffed and that Warring gets the Icicle Spear very quickly. So we're going to swap out, save the energy, clear the debuff and bring in Cresselia since our Cresselia struggles with an opposing Talonflame since we're not running Future Sight and go for Double Grass not to take them out. See the first one does about, it's about 45%. The one Incinerate that we've got through 
on the opposing war rain means that these two grass knots will KO rather than just getting them very low. Now their Talonflame is coming back in, they have to throw energy to take us out which is absolutely fantastic. So we can go for Moonblast, start chipping them down, put some pressure on. And what happens here is it's also really nice because they throw a move to take us out and then they can't have a Brave Bird stored straight after. The Flame Charge isn't actually enough to take us out. We're going to get to one more Moonblast. This is going to get them pretty low, but they are going to come out of this with energy. So we swap to Snorlax and lick them down. Deny all that energy. That's absolutely fantastic. They had 100 energy there easily and could have done a lot of damage to our backline with shields down. And now they've got Scrafty. And this might seem bad. Again, it could farm down, throw a foul play at our Talonflame and possibly take the win. But our Talonflame is loaded, remember. We left with a Flame Charge. So it doesn't matter that we're not taking them out here. The Scrafty actually uses up its energy to take us out, which is a mistake on their part. Wouldn't matter either way, though, because we can fire this off straight away. Bang, take out the Scrafty and take that win. Now... The main thing that gave us that win was sniping down their Talonflame with the Snorlax because they had 1 HP and that could have been very very bad if they could have fired off Brave Birds to Snorlax or to our own Talonflame and we'd have not been looking good. Right, matchup number 4, another Cresselia lead and we make a mistake here, they swap straight into Regirock and I was thinking about firing a move off before I swapped out but then Regirock resists both the Talonflame's moves, we should have swapped straight into Cresselia to start getting Grass Knots off, but we ended up having to shield up a Stone Edge because Regirock gets to Stone Edge incredibly quickly, quickly, faster even than I actually expected it to. But Grass Knot Cresselia has a good matchup here, the Grass Knots are super effective, nothing that Regirock has is going to threaten you that badly. The Stone Edges start to add up after a while, but you can see that they just don't do massive damage individually because Regirock isn't very attack weighted, Cresselia is very defense weighted, but our, our switch timers are out of sync, so they actually catch a Grass Knot on their Cresselia, and what we're going to do here is build up excess energy and then just swap back into Talonflame. We don't mind if we end up taking out this Cresselia and then the Regirock comes back in and takes out Talonflame, that's completely fine, but this Cresselia is running Future Sight which again is really not good for us. Um, that future site is going to do big, big damage. So we're going to go straight for the Brave Bird. We're not gambling with the Flame Charge and them not shielding and it not taking them out because we're not going to get to another move anyway. So we're happy to let Talon Flame go down here because we don't want it to, we don't want to waste a shield and then Regirock just snipe it down. Anyway, we're going to bring in Snorlax and start building up excess energy. Our Cresselia is really loaded. So we should have no trouble getting this shield off the opponent and taking them out. Now they swap aggressively into Reggie Rock, which makes me think that they might have Focus Blast. So we throw a Body Slam, get the shield, and then do a combo play straight into Cresselia, throw the Grass Knot back to back, take it out, and that's Reggie Rock dealt with. Now let's just hope that Snorlax can handle whatever's left in the back of this game. It's a war rain. We're looking good. We can go for stack one for Grass Knots, get some big, big damage in. And you're gonna see how much it does from scratch. You see it's about 40%, 45%-ish. We're going to get another Grass Knot off. We might just survive this Icicle Spear to get one more throw. It doesn't matter if we don't because one superpower from Shadow Snorlax is going to do monstrous damage anyway. But what this means is that we don't actually have to land a superpower to take them out and debuff ourselves. We can actually farm down entirely and then start pumping Body Slams into the opposing Cresselia. You can see Earthquake does a reasonable chunk but it's not going to take us out. Snorlax is bulky, even Shadow Snorlax is bulky. It can take moves all day. You can farm down the Cresselia now, farm down the Warren and take that win. GG. That game was all over the place with the opponent swapping aggressively and trying to throw my switch timer out and take advantage of those situations, but we still managed to pull it off. Very good game to that opponent there. So the pressure's on now, we're on 4 out of 5 wins in this set so far, we're about 45 elo points away from Legend Rank, so we're a bit worried that anything less than a 5-0 will not quite get us there, and we really wanted to try and hit it in the last set, this was the last battle of the day at the end of the 25 matches, you need this win to get to Legend Rank. So what's this opponent going to lead? And my heart sank, Giratina is one of the worst leads for Talonflame in general, but we're going to give it a go. we got to fight for it. So, we're going to go for the Brave Bird, get a big chunk of damage, I'll get a shield straight off the bat, and then we're going to swap aggressively into Cresselia, because this is a Dragon Breath 
Giratina, which means it doesn't dominate Cresselia as much as a Shadow Claw variant does. It does have Shadow Sneak, which does a nice little chunk of damage, but it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme because they bring in an Alolan Muk, which again is very, very punishing to Cresselia. This Muk can survive two Moon Blasts. You need to land three charge moves to take them out. It has access to Dark Pulse, which is going to do big, big damage. They do throw the Dark Pulse and get us pretty low. And now we're going to go for another Moon Blast, try and take them out. We're going to see if we can get to a third charge move because right now this is looking really bad for us. We're just able to make it to a Grass Knot. I don't know if this would KO a lower Moke, but it might pressure a shield, does it? It does. That's absolutely fantastic. Now we've got a shield advantage and we're going to farm down with Talonflame. We're going to call that this is an Acid Spray. It is. That's absolutely beautiful for us. And now we're going to farm down and tie. They get to another charge move. This is probably a Dark Pulse or it's not worth gambling that it's not. We've got quite a bit of energy here. So we give up that shield advantage that we did take. But we've got another Brave Bird going. Is Giratina going to shield this or is it going to go down? They, it's Empoleon actually that comes in. And this is looking horrendous. So we've got Empoleon to get onto our Talon Flame, which is a pretty tough wall. But the Brave Bird does a huge chunk of damage. And now Shadow Snorlax is definitely the win condition. We're going to shield up the Hydro Cannon because it's the hardest hitting charge move left in the game. Giratina struggles to do a lot of damage to Snorlax. But this Dragon Breath is going to add up. Normally, Snorlax walls a Shadow Claw Giratina, but when it's got Dragon Breath, it can really add up. We're close to two Body Slams, so we're going to throw this. It's double resisted, but it will knock them out just so they don't get to another Dragon Claw. The Empoleon is nowhere near another Hydro Cannon, so we can just go ahead, throw a Superpower and knock them out. Body Slam would have been enough, but still, we're going to take that win. Good game. So we lost lead, we lost Switch, but we were still able to take the win because Talonflame can still put massive pressure on opponents. So we're able to take our 5-0 and, and that is almost certainly going to guarantee that we hit Legend Rank with this. I mean, you guys have seen the title and as I've said, this was the last matchup of the day. That was the last match of the 25, so you know I'm going to hit it. Absolutely fantastic. 30-26, great elo point to jump up to. Nice and comfortable. We get that sexy Lysander outfit. Just a quick note, I am going to be trying to build a counter team to Warren for the Ultra Premier Classic as well. So if you guys want to see that, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And now I'm going to talk about some more matchups, specifically the set before that one. So at this point, I was around 29.40. And in this lead, we've got an Alolan Muk. We're very happy to see this on the lead just to keep it away from Cresselia. Snorlax can do okay against it, but also it is resisting the lick damage. So... Really, this is your best matchup for it on the team. Now, we're not going to shield the first move. If it's Dark Pulse, which it is, it does decent damage, but it doesn't take us out. If it's Acid Spray, you don't want to shield that. And we can get a shield out of this situation or take them out. Here, we are going to get that shield, and we're just going to keep, keep going here. And they're going to actually farm us down entirely. That's not too bad for us. We bring in Snorlax, and I believe we let this go, yeah. It's an Acid Spray, so absolutely fantastic no shield. We've got a shield advantage, but we're going to give it up here because this is probably a Dark Pulse now that we're debuffed. Worth the shield, that would have done massive damage otherwise. But we've got a superpower ready to go. They bring in Scrafty. We're going to throw this straight away and swap to Cresselia because a Grass Knot at this point will probably take Scrafty. I don't get it very low. And they've got an Obstagoon in the back. So this is looking very, very bad. They've got double Dark Fighters. So they're both resisting the lick damage from Snorlax. They're both got counter to the super effective to it. They've both got access to dark moves to hit Cresselia for super effective damage. Now we do get the attack drop against this Obstagoon, which is absolutely clutch. We're going to let this Night Slash go through. And then the Obstagoon boosts and gets its attack stat back. This is absolutely going awfully for us. But we throw a Moon Blast. They decide to let it go and get taken out. So they must be thinking that Scrafty is their win condition here. I'm going to go for Grass Knot and get the last shield. And now we should be able to get to a Body Slam or a Superpower and take out this Scrafty. We're not going to shield. We believed our lose condition was to actually shield up a Power Up Punch. And you see, we get to the Body Slam and we don't throw it because we were stressed about getting to a Superpower. Look at how low that Scrafty is. We didn't need to get to a Superpower. We shield up a Power Up Punch and they've got a foul play and they're going to take us out. And we had the energy. We should have just thrown. We had the win. And we threw it away. Ah, you hate to see it. 
But that's the pressure, you know. We knew we were getting close to legend rank and we just choked in that game and ended up losing because of it. All right, another Talon Flame mirror match. Now you can see here that we're slightly ahead. I think the opponent lagged and lost one turn there because we were throwing slightly ahead of them, which means we get to sneak and incinerate through when they throw their first Brave Bird. They swap out and we're just gonna throw this Flame Charge straight away. They swap into a Pidgeot and we're happy to stay in here a little bit and throw a Brave Bird as well. There's either gonna get the second shield or do monstrous damage. He gets that second shield and now we're gonna swap into Cresselia because Cresselia has the worst matchup with their Talonflame, so we'd much rather spend it here and let it take some damage. We're not worried about giving up shields, to be honest. If this Pidgeot wants to Brave Bird us, it is welcome to. I don't mind. I'm just gonna start throwing Moon Blast and just, like I said, we're just spending the Cresselia. We're just using it up and seeing what the opponent wants to do with that. They do end up throwing the Brave Bird. It's not enough to take us out. They swap back into their own Talonflame because our switch timers are very, very out of sync because we threw two charge moves after they swapped out. So we're gonna just, well, they're gonna farm us down, which is kind of scary, but we've got energy loaded on Talonflame. We've still got a shield. So we can just shield up this Brave Bird from them. And then we could have thrown at least one more Incinerate, I believe, before we threw this Brave Bird, but we were a little bit worried, decided to throw it straight away. And what do they bring in? They bring the Pidgeot back in, and we're gonna swap into our Snorlax because their switch timer isn't up. We can get to a Body Slam before they can throw another move, take them out, and let's see what they've got in the back. It's a Skarmory, so this is a triple flyer, triple Brave Bird team that this opponent's running. And we want them to throw a Brave Bird. So like, go ahead, throw the Brave Bird to take out the Snorlax, debuff your defense, then Talonflame can put some work in. But this, they're building up a lot of energy, and we're thinking at this point they might be planning to go for back-to-back -back Brave Birds against us. We're gonna see what they choose to do. Maybe this is a Sky Attack, maybe it's a Brave Bird. It's a Sky Attack, it's not even gonna quite take out Snorlax. We're able to get to one more Body Slam, and this is gonna almost secure the win. We can probably swap into Talonflame here, try and snipe down and they throw energy. Is this a Brave Bird? It probably is. It's gonna take us out, but Snorlax is alive, can lick down before the air slash registers, and we're gonna take that win. GG. We're glad we used Cresselia against Pidgeot because against Skarmory and Talonflame, it doesn't really have any play against either of them. Okay, next opponent's bringing another Talonflame lead. These things are fairly popular on the lead. They're very strong in the current Ultra League meta because one of their hardest counters in Giratina is just scared. There's so many wall rains running around that really shut them down that no one's leading Giratina. The only Giratina lead I saw was the one that's in my last matchup that I actually hit Legend rank with. Now this opponent, no shields in Incinerate, which is an incredibly ballsy call. They throw a Brave Bird. This is probably another Brave Bird. So we've got a double shield and they haven't shielded. So we're in an awful position right now. We're gonna throw a Flame Charge. Are they gonna let it through? They do shield up, so we get one of those shields back. We get a major spike of lag, which is not ideal. What is this going to be? Is it going to be a flame charge? Is it going to be a brave bird? It's just a flame charge. That's absolutely fine. And they're going to swap out to Politoed. We're going for the brave bird. Big damage or get that last shield. We get the shield. That's fantastic. Now we're all level. We can bring Cresselia in here and start throwing some grass knots. Even though this is a shadow Politoed and yeah, Earthquake, Blizzard, um, Weather Ball, they're all going to start adding up over time but you can see blizzard doesn't even do half of cresselia's health from a shadow polytoad that's how bulky cresselia is um so we just go for double grass not back to back take them straight out don't take any more charge move damage and this means that this puts a lot of pressure on this talon flame to get a move off fast to take us out because they are in moon blast range they're not able to get to a charge move because they left themselves energy dry we can take them out with the moon blast and now they've got a machamp in the back and this is scary so what we do here, we swapped there because Machamp takes seven counters to get to Rock Slide. Cresselia takes seven Psycho Cuts to get to Moon Blast. We knew we'd lose CMP tie and we knew they'd have to throw straight away because they couldn't afford to wait. Now, if we had have not done that swap, they would have taken out Cresselia with the Rock Slide. They probably could have taken out Snorlax and they probably would have taken out Talonflame. So that was a very clutch catch. Maybe Snorlax could have handled them with one Body Slam, would have done big damage but still it was a close game and GG. Okay, Scrafty lead. Now this, you'd think it's a good matchup for Talonflame. It kind of is, 
but this opponent catches a flame charge on Jellicent. Really, you don't want to try and throw that flame charge straight away. That was really unfortunate for us. And this is a bubble Jellicent, so Snorlax isn't quite as punishing of a, of a counter swap as it would be against a Hex Jellicent because the bubbles are neutral. The bubble beams will start to add up eventually. So we are going to throw a double resisted body slam just for a little bit extra chip just to make sure that we stay ahead of that bubble and bubble beam damage because it will start adding up and our lick damage will start slowing down as these debuffs are coming in. As you can see, we're down to half health already and they're not quite in the red. So they are catching us up here on damage. We might throw another body slam here. Not sure yet. We actually lose CMP, which is really unfortunate. Um, now they can probably take switch advantage, I believe, if we let this through. We are going to get very low. This body slam, they might be able to shield it and take switch. It's going to be close, this. Going to do a little bit of damage, not very much at all. They actually swap out to Scrafty, deny our energy, which is a very good play on their part. And now this Scrafty is loaded. We haven't forced a shield out of them with the flame charge because they caught it. We shield up a power-up punch, which is absolutely devastating for us. You do not want to shield a power-up punch with Talonflame, we could have easily taken a foul play. So really, it was an amateur shield there. We shouldn't have done that at all. Unless they've already at least done one power-up punch, you don't want to shield a foul play. We shield another power-up punch. That is absolutely appalling for us. And now they're going to be able to get to a foul play and take us out. Not quite take us out, but we're very, very low on health. So we're going to swap to Cresselia, start getting some energy, and hopefully get to a Moonblast and take this out. We take a double boosted foul play. Monstrous damage, they catch a Grass Knot on Jellicent. Everything about this game is just going badly. This opponent is running circles around me and they've got a Drapion in the back. Nothing we can do here now. The damage is done. We've lost two charge moves into that Jellicent that we really needed against other targets. They've still got a shield. This Crunch is going to do super effective damage and take us out. The Scraft has still got health. Talonflame's almost gone. We're just going to lose this game. We get to a flame charge, but we they get their move off first, and they're just going to take us out. GG to this opponent. You absolutely ran circles all around me. I got flustered, made mistakes, and you played it very, very well. So, fifth matchup of the second set, and what would it be if not another Talonflame mirror match? This is a mirror match that you're going to have to get used to if you do play this team, as scary as it is, because... There's just a lot of Talonflames on lead. As we've said, the Giratinas are scared away. So Talonflame makes a dominant lead. And as you can see, every Talonflame so far has just been going straight Brave Bird. We're going to go for the Flame Charge. They do sneak and incinerate through, which is unfortunate. I don't think we're able to sneak one through back, which is a little bit of a shame. They let the Flame Charge through, which is a big call by them. Now, we do win. I believe this is CMP Tan. I believe we have won it here to get this Flame Charge off. They do let it go through, so now we're down two shields, but we have switch advantage. But we're going to throw this Brave Bird and give up that switch advantage and swap into Snorlax because everything on the team, as we've said, does pretty well against War Rain. So we're not worried about staying in to get the right thing lined up with it. We just want to get the shields or do big damage and just see what they want to do. We swap out to Snorlax to see what we bait out as well in the back, just in case they've got something weak to Talonflame. And this War Rain is staying in, so maybe they're weak to Snorlax in the back. Now I'm thinking maybe it's a Shadow Claw Giratina, maybe it's a Jellicent, who knows. But we're able to get to this superpower, couple of HP and a Dream. This is going to do monstrous damage. Bang! Doesn't quite take them out, but gets them very, very low. It's an Obama Snow in the back. Talonflame can go to town. These double super effective incinerates are going to smash Obama Snow to pieces. But we're pretty low, and that Weather Ball is going to put us in farm down range. But also at this point, the damage is done. Cresselia can get to one Moonblast and it will be enough to take out Shadow, Obama Snow, and then um, their Warren in the back has a couple of HP, so it won't be able to put any work in. They realize and surrender. GG. All right, so two of the four losses that we took in total with the team in that set, and the other two losses I took were in the first set of battles I did, where I was still getting to grips with the team a little bit, made a few mistakes, and those are the battles I'm going to show you guys now. So starting with the battle right at the beginning of the video, the very, very quick one where the opponent surrendered only after my Talonflame took out their Scrafty. Um, that was the very first matchup I actually did with this team. And then this point picks up 
from there. So this was the second battle that I ever did with this team right now. And then it's going to play onwards and through the next three sets of matchups. I don't want to bore you guys with me talking over all three of them about all my decisions and everything, but I want to show them to you guys as well in case there's anything you guys can learn from it. Some different matchups, seeing how I play different things out because the majority of these games are wins. There's only two losses in the first set and then there was an 11 win streak and there's a lot to see you know there's a lot of matchups there's a lot of winning leads there's a lot of a lower nine tail leads that you're going to see and they're pretty self-explanatory that you want to stay in with Talonflame but there's a few mix and match gameplays where people have different team compositions and they make different decisions and there can be some interesting things to pick up from that if you guys have any questions about the team, let me know down below. I will try and respond to comments as and when I can. If you've enjoyed the video, please drop a like. If you're enjoying the content and want to see more teams that I'm putting together, consider hitting the subscribe button. You're absolute legends, all of you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me on this journey to legend rank. Good luck in reaching your goals in Go Battle League, and I will catch all of you guys next time.